the Joe Rogan experience. So, um, so 1998, it started. And wh why did they, why, I mean, no gi back then was very unpopular. 100%. It's sort of an interesting story how it started. So the owner and creator of ADCC is Sheikh Tahnoun, and he was going to college uh, in the 90s in San Diego. UFC comes out in 1993. He gets hooked on it, and he just starts training, walks into a jiu-jitsu school in San Diego and starts training. He hides his identity. No one knows who he is, not even his instructor. He just goes by the name of Ben. Um, <laughs> and then that's pretty gangster <laughs> yeah like literally no one knows who he is except a few people so he graduates i believe in 1995 goes back and then tells everybody who he actually really is and you know he starts creating this rule set and you're right no gi back then was just pretty much non-existent so he went against the grain and he did something interesting, sort of like what the UFC did. Um, you know, the original UFCs, it wasn't mixed martial arts. It was art versus art. And that was the concept of ADCC. Judo guys versus jiu-jitsu guys versus um, sambo, et cetera, et cetera. So he created this rule set. And then in 1998, the, the first ADCC you know, happened in Abu Dhabi. It, it was really interesting because back in the day, it was frowned upon to have no gi competitions. Like Brazilian jiu jitsu guys wanted you to train and compete only in the gi. Yeah. Yeah. No. Did you, you started in the gi, right? I started in the gi. The first like two and a half years was only in the gi. And then I made a transition to no gi. When, when year did you make the transition? So I started in 2011. So 2014 is when I really started to make the transition. And then by like late 14, 2015, then it was like pretty much all no gi because I didn't have any gi training partners. Eddie Cummings, Gary, like all the competitors uh, at Henzo's, um, at least John's students were all no gi guys. Eddie Cummings, has he vanished? I have no idea what happened. To him. I went to yeah. his Instagram the other day to see what he was up to. He posted like, like three years ago. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he stopped training with us and then he was training uh, for a while at Unity. And then uh, I haven't talked to him. I don't even know if he's still training. Like he was, he had a PhD in physics. Um, so I heard he like started teaching again. He's got like a like a normal job now. I've, wow. I've I have no idea. Um, so maybe he's trains, maybe he doesn't. But he definitely doesn't compete anymore. So so weird. He was so talented. He was. He was. He uh, he went in and was crushing EBIs and had really good tough ADCC matches. He had that super close match against Tanquinho. Um, and then uh, yeah, he just like after the after the EBI with uh, with Geo where he lost to Geo. He just like we didn't see him anymore after that. Wow crazy it's but you know it's such a such a wild sport and it does so much damage to your body you know so many guys i mean everybody that i talk to years later like oh i got two discs replaced in my neck i got this going yeah. on i got that going on my because everything we do is concave shoulders like with the shoulders coming forward i like can't lift my i can't do like anything overhead i can't like wash the back of my neck because my shoulders are just i'm always inverting doing this it's like anything like this i can do but i can't bridge like trying to scrub my back of my head i'm like can't get my shoulders back there so it's just like all a mess and i'm only 27 so <laughs> once i'm 40 i'm gonna be fucked but i think you could probably fix that yeah i could i'm just lazy <laughs> i'm just like you saying you're lazy is hilarious that I, is hilarious I'll, every day i go to the, i go to watch like john teach and i'm like just sit up straight and then I do it for like 30 seconds. I'm like, my, my back is tired. And then I just like end up sitting like this the whole class. My fucking head's like leaning forward. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, you gotta wonder like what, I mean, who's who's been able to do it the longest? Like what's the longest running like competitor? I, I would say there's Andre Galvao. I mean, actually. Andre, yeah, yeah, I would say Andre. Because I mean, he's competing what, since he's 16? He's, he's been 40. He's been at the highest levels for 20 years. Um, you know, I saw him in the early 2000s, there was a documentary called Arte Suave. He was a brown belt back then. This was like 2001, two or three, and here he is. How old is Andre now? He's got to be 40. close to 40, right? I think he's 40. I think he'll be 40 for this ADCC. Is that his last one? Well, last oh. year was supposed to be his last one, but mm. then he came back for this one. So um, I'm going to plan to make sure that it's his last one. <laughs> when you do these matches, since you've been doing these no time limit matches, like the Felipe match, which I think you really shine in those matches, but that's really for the cognoscente. Yeah. You know, that's really for the hardcore people that want to yeah. see. It's not spectator friendly. Right. It's just to determine who's better at jiu-jitsu. But no time limit matches for spectators are just atrocious because 
who the fuck wants to watch four hours of jiu-jitsu? Like, most people don't want to watch 10 minutes of jiu-jitsu. Right. So who wants to watch, like, a two-hour match? Um, but they're important to have sometimes just to show who's the best because you actually have to do jiu-jitsu and know how to do submissions. Well, not in the Felipe match because there wasn't a submission, but um, you have to you have to be better at jiu-jitsu than the other guy. There's no stalling and playing tactics for 10 minutes and winning by advantage or two points. Uh, so they're, they have their place, but to build the sport to a spectator sport is not – no time limit's not the way. Well, it's it's not the way for spectators, but it is the way, as you said, to determine who's the best. And I think that's supposedly what jiu-jitsu is all about. It really, the early days of the UFC, there was no time limits because yep. it was just like, who wins? And that that's the purest form of any martial art. It's like... You know, as soon as you have rounds, then you have people gaming the system. They try to win the round by sprinting in the last 30 seconds and really going hard or, you know, trying to figure out a way to manage your time. But you, you can't really do that if there's no time yeah. limit. Which I think that has a place, too, like points and rounds sure. and stuff. Because then you have to – you have the whole tactical element, which comes into play. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think there's a place for both, for sure. But spectator – Spectators definitely need a time limit. They want to know like when this is going to be over. It I got would be tomorrow. fucking wild though if all UFC fights had no time limit in this day and age. I mean, they, they would be brutal. Yeah. Didn't I mean, a uh, hoist have like an hour and something match with chemo, I, I believe. Like in one of the. I early... don't think it was that long. It was like something no, ridiculous. No, it was right? it was pretty long, but only I don't think it was that long. Okay. I don't find that find out how long the hoist chemo match was. I think it just seemed long because it was so crazy. Because he was finishing took. everyone so fast, yeah. and then he was the guy against Chemo, and it was a little bit longer. Tom Erickson had a match with Marilla Bustamante back in the day in one of the weird, you know, like uh, offshoots, one of those little small companies that tried to make a big, uh, like an M MMA event. I think it was a no glove event too. It was back in those days, and I think that match went like an hour. Wow. Yeah, and you know, Marilla Bustamante was 185 pounds, and Tom Erickson was 300 pounds. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. a monster. I remember Tom Erickson.